Our next speaker, Ivan Elon, is Senior Fellow of the Center on Peace and Liberty at the Independent Institute, which is one of the foundations that have stood four square and steadfast uh, in favor of individual liberty and limited government, especially since 9-11. Uh, it's been one of those ones that has just been the real champions of the libertarian organizations. Um, he is also the assistant editor of the Independent Review, which is published by the Independent Institute. He's a graduate of Iowa State University and received an MBA in Applied Economics and a PhD in National Security Policy from George Washington University. He has been Director of Defense Policy Studies at the Cato Institute, Principal Defense Analyst at the Congressional Budget Office, and an Investigator for the House Foreign Affairs Committee. The title of Ivan's talk is, The Empire Has No Clothes, U.S. Foreign Policy Exposed. Ivan Elon. Well, it's a delight to be here today uh, to talk to everybody on this subject. Uh, the title of the talk is just basically my book. However, I am going to talk a bit about that, but I'm also going to talk about a, another project that I'm working on, and the working title is Recarving Rushmore Presidential Greatness Reconsidered. And yesterday somebody mentioned that uh, perhaps uh, Rushmore ought to be changed, and I was delighted with that because I think that we should probably remove three of the people on that. Um, and you might be surprised which one I would keep, actually. Um, but anyway, I'll, I'll get into that later. Uh, the first part of the talk, I'm gonna, I am going to talk about uh, the things in my book because it's very applicable to this. And then I'm going to go into a specialized area, which, which is also very applicable, but it's, it's more towards my uh, current area of research. Um, my book basically is a history of uh, foreign policy, which Ralph Rako already gave uh, yesterday, history of US foreign policy in the first chapter. But then I have other chapters saying why conservatives should be against empire, why liberals should be against empire, and why everyone else should be against empire. And it's written uh, not for libertarians per se, it's written for a, a wider audience, uh, obviously. Uh, I, I had erroneously assumed that libertarians would naturally um, shoe empire, but of course the Iraq war has brought out the fact that some, some libertarians don't, so perhaps I should have uh, included a chapter for libertarians as well. Um, and I'll just basically go into some of the things that I say in the chapters, then I'll move on to the, to the second part of the talk. Um, to conservatives I say, well obviously uh, empire uh, overseas causes big government at home, and I don't just mean uh, increased defense spending, increase in foreign aid, but also you find over history that uh, big, uh, getting into foreign wars uh, actually increases domestic spending. Uh, and and the, the classic case is uh, right, right now, I mean, George Bush, uh, as we all know, is, has uh, just turned on the spigots uh, domestically as well as uh, in defense uh, spending. And, and uh, most of the defense spending, of course, has nothing to do with uh, uh, fighting the war on terror. So uh, uh, conservatives should be uh, concerned about big government uh, at home increasing when we have these foreign adventures. Uh, the second thing, and I think um, many conservatives don't focus on this, and that is that um, any war is not necessarily good. In fact, over, over time, uh, empires have declined either because they lost wars, uh, such as Nazi Germany or uh, Imperial Japan, but many times uh, empires have declined after they won wars and became so depleted in resources because, as we all know, uh, the economic engine is really the driver of na national power. And of course, Britain is a ca classic case in point. After uh, becoming involved in two world wars, uh, it was sapped of all its energy and, and declined, and, and the French as well. Um, so I think uh, this overextension uh, could lead to a decline in power. Now, of course, we're more friends of liberty than power, but uh, many conservatives, national greatness conservatives, of course, uh, are into national greatness, national power, and they should be a little bit more uh, cognizant of the fact that uh, over unnecessary wars can sap your power and uh, lead to decline. And I think we see the overstretch now in Iraq 
mean, this is a small country, and it's really uh, stretching our military beyond belief when in combination with the other uh, intervention in Afghanistan. Uh, so, and our armed forces, as they get more complex and the military keeps buying more and more expensive items, the, the forces get smaller. So uh, it's likely, and, and the military just um, uh, procures things like that because they never want to make a cheap anything. So uh, there's less and less forces to fight uh, more and more of these um, uh, brush fire wars. Now, of course, for liberals, I usually use the civil liberties um, saying, and the theme of this conference is very important because it, it really get, we always think of, well, the casualties in Iraq, we've got 3,500 dead or almost that in, in Americans, and of course, we don't even bother to keep track of how many Iraqis have been killed. So all these people have been killed, and but people rightly focus on that, but, that, but they don't focus also on the war's effect on the civil liberties and, and the closing down of uh, liberty here at home. And I think that's our first, that's probably the most severe effect, even above the casualties uh, for the long term. And of course, we all know that, and I'm not going to um, uh, dwell on that, but there's a rich history of many uh, foreign wars uh, resulting in civil liberties uh, 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 erosion at home. World War I was probably the worst. Uh, the Civil War was really bad as well. Uh, World War II was less so, except if you were Japanese American, then of course it was bad. So. Uh, but it was still severe, and of course we have civil liberties violations even, even today with the war on terror, uh, and I'll get into that a little bit later. Um, for everyone else, the chapter for everyone else, I basically go into uh, why that we're getting blowback from our own foreign policy, um, the, the terrorism on 9-11. On now, lots of people don't like to talk about this in the mainstream media, and as you saw the other night uh, when Ron Paul mentioned it, he was regarded as a kook for mentioning it, and uh, Rudy Giuliani made fun of him. But of course, Ron Paul was right on target, and uh, uh, this, this type of blowback is liable to get worse uh, now with the Iraq uh, fiasco. Uh, so that's, that's another, yet another reason uh, why we don't want to do these things. And I'm really going into practical, the practical aspects of this. Um, and I think now, uh, from a geostrategic point of view, people say, well, you know, um, we've, we have this interventionist foreign policy, and we're le it's left over from the Cold War, and we, we can't get rid of it. Well, I think we should really reassess that. And of course, we have all sorts of institutional factors that are pushing this, you know, weapons sales. Uh, uh, we have a military industrial complex and uh, that's a, that Eisenhower warned about. And of course, that's a, that's a real factor in trying to get rid of some of this stuff. And then if you have the military forces, you'll get people like Madeleine Albright saying, well, we have this big, beautiful military, why don't we use it? And uh, th there's, you know, the US is the only uh, country on the globe that can do these things. So we have an obligation. I get told that by Europeans all the time. Well, you have the obligations of a superpower. And they're stunned when I say, well, maybe we should be less of a superpower and let you be more of a superpower. So, uh, you know, they don't hear that from Americans very often because American, most Americans uh, are content, apparently, to pay for this type of uh, national greatness. Uh, except, uh, as I say, it may not turn, turn out that the na it shortens the national greatness. Um, but now that we have the, the Cold War is over, even if you make an argument, uh, as many did during the Cold War, that you needed this interventionist foreign policy to combat the Soviet Union, of course, there's one significant factor, and that's the Soviet's not there, Soviet Union is not there anymore. But of course, we've expanded the empire with the expansion of NATO, uh, ba new bases in Central America, um, uh, you know, tightening up the, uh, our alliances in East Asia, et cetera. So, uh, the cost benefits, though, I think have changed. Uh, in the Cold War, you could make some argument for that. I'm not, I'm not an advocate of that because I think there was an alternative uh, uh, way that we could have uh, conducted ourselves uh, with the Soviets, um, at least the US government uh, could have conducted itself with the Soviets uh, that would have uh, cost a lot less money and probably ha would have had a better uh, effect in collapsing the Soviet Union faster. Uh, but after this, uh, after the Cold War is over, there's absolutely no uh, reason for, for such for so many foreign interventions.